what I've noticed is that you are surrounded by conversations about death, but they're all about violent death, wars, pandemics, school shootings, violent movies, death in, in the most uh, disturbing ways. But nobody is talking with you about natural death and how we all die and what it means to try to have a life that's informed by the beauty of our passing. Last week, I had a couple of 20-year-olds who, who lost their mom want to reach out to me just to have somebody to talk to about what's going to happen. I, you know, I'm not planning on getting shot down by a drone. What happens when I get old? What's going to happen to my parents? How can I be prepared for the process of dying? And so I'm going there with you. Come with me and we'll talk about what really happens. Here's an interesting question. Why would you, especially if you're in your 20s, think about death? That seems kind of weird, right? It seems odd to me that people don't think about death, but I get it. The way our world is set up now, people die away from their families and we end up not talking very much with young people about death and you may not have ever seen it. What's really odd is that the one thing, every living thing, you, me, everything that breathes, everything that lives, dies. Trees, our pets, ourselves, we have a limited number of breaths on the planet. And so we spend our time occupying ourselves by thinking and talking about things that don't really matter so much. And we don't talk about the thing that matters so greatly, except when our religion reminds us or history reminds us. And so I'm going to talk with you about it today. Uh, it's been on my mind. <sighs> I'm sorry to, to my heart. My young friend, Julie, died last week. She had been fighting cancer for... 10 years. She fought with an intensity. I can't imagine anyone fighting, any soldier in any battle. She spent everything in her being to fight it. But at the same time, especially in the last year or so, she worked on preparing herself and ended up having the most beautiful death I've ever witnessed. And I have to tell you at 72, I have learned a lot and keep on learning more and more about loss and death. So I want to share with you a few things about Julie that I thought were so great and are an inspiration for me and how I live. And I am hoping they will be for you too. The first thing that struck me about Julie is that she was always with me anyway, honest about her feelings, but in being honest, she didn't feel sorry for herself. I never once heard Julie consider herself a victim. She said it sucked, but it wasn't in a victim-y way. She said when it hurt. She said what she hated about what was happening to her body. But even in honoring her experience, she didn't sink into it. She pulled herself back out of it and kept on going. She was more than anyone I've ever known, very conscious of being in the moment because during this time she knew something that we all need to know is that it's every moment what we have. And uh, we had a conversation about a week before she died. Oh, we talked for about 90 minutes. It was so intense, maybe the most meaningful conversation I've ever had. And she was talking about carrying a very smooth stone in her pocket. It was a stone she found on a hike and she had learned from someone the joy and the relief and the calm that can come from just having a smooth stone. 
And she said that she noticed she'd had her hand in her pocket a lot and she was rubbing the stone and it was bringing her joy. And she knew that she would be giving the stone away. And it was a way to talk about the joy you can feel and how you pass it along. The week, the very week, um, that what turned out to be her last week, she was making plans to have fun and thinking specifically about things she could plan for to enjoy the life of the people she loved. Um, she made this wild plan that her husband told me about to go on a trip with him because even when she was so, so ill, her commitment was to be open to the possibilities of life for every moment she was in it and to create possibilities for people who would be here when she wasn't in it. Her husband told me, by the way, that um, it's a trip he's going to take. And of course, Julie will be with him. So why am I asking you in your 20s to think about death? It's because the awareness of death is the only way for any of us to truly live and to embrace life. Knowing it's not forever lets us grab life in the moment, hold on to it and find joy in it. It is not morbid. It is beautiful and spiritually graceful to embrace the reality that we each have a destiny and a set of possibilities and an amount of time we can achieve those things in. So because I am Granny Rana and because Julie was much younger than me, it hurts that she left before I did. Um, like all of you who have had loss and are facing losses, I feel great comfort that she lives perhaps a little bit more now because I am trying to share some of Julie's joy with you. It's not an easy subject, I know. Um, if it stirs something in you and that is painful and you want to comment, leave me a note below and I promise I will be back to you. I hope you receive this with the love I'm sending it.